so yes hello aspirants so am i audible is the screen clear so that we can start the session so let me just check am i audible dear aspirants so this is the upper limb session of the mcqs which we have started this is the second actually this is the second session first session already done and this is the second session of the upper limb discussion so before starting the session meanwhile the aspirants are joining we can have a discussion on my own introduction and about the introduction of the platform of an academy myself dr mona lisa md anatomy from arm force medical college pune and i am here to discuss the anatomy uh, upper limb series of the second part targeting for the neat pg 2022 examination has got a total of 9 years of teaching experience okay so my dear aspirants uh, let's uh, talk about the special class features when i am talking about the special class feature it's a free platform where the educator and the learners can interact among themselves it's an interactive live session polls are conducted among the learners you can raise your hands and you can get your doubts clear right itself when the session is going on you can also yes divya mm, uh, good evening dear chitranjan good evening dear so you are not going to miss any of the session if you start following me on the an academy app you are getting the notification of all the sessions taken by me also once the session is finished you can get the pdf notes anytime anywhere read from the top educators of an academy platform use the code and add 10 and do present for the live free session on the an academy platform i would also like to talk about the plus subscription when i am talking about the plus subscription all 19 subjects can be assessed in a very systematic way you can assess both live and recorded version you can study from india's top educator compete in live test and quizzes study on the device of your choice and assess more than 25000 mcqs these 25000 mcqs is targeted uh, for the uh, aspirants for their examination Komal, yes, hello, good evening, dear Komal. And also, these MCQs are made by top educators of Fun Academy platform, and a detailed explanation is provided for each and every MCQs. This is on the high yield MCQs, and this will help you to get a better rank in the competitive exam. I would also like to tell you about the iconic subscription. When I am talking about iconic subscription, that means it's a merging of Fun Academy and the Prep Ladder. So you can have an access to two of the best platform. You can have a full. Uh, SS2. You will have a full SS2, the uh, structured live batches, recorded versions, and also full syllabus, Q Bank, the uh, twenty-five thousand MCQs, live test and quizzes. Other than that, you can have an SS2, the prep ladder. That means clinical integrated essentials, video lectures, Q Bank three, active guidance, rapid revision, snap sorts, and treasure dream notes of twenty twenty-one. So all these can be assessed by you. Other than that, congratulations to the toppers of FMG December session. I wish them best of luck so that they can target their upcoming session with a very uh, good marks and a good rank. All the best. I am very glad to share their images with you. FMG twenty two high yield MCQ batch is starting up. Neat PG twenty two high yield MCQ marathon is starting up, and the Neat PG subscription a comparison can be made in the Neat PG Plus subscription, in the Iconic subscription, and the Light subscription. So whichever suits you, you can go for that subscription. That will be highly highly beneficial for you. Yes, my dear aspirants. Ah, uh, okay. So you can also use my code and get an extra discount of ten percent by using the code and add ten. So let's start with the MCQ session now. All the best to my dear aspirants. Okay. so let's start with the first mcq first mcq a 26 year old a 26 year old a 26 year old man is stabbed in the left chest during a bar brawl several days after he is treated he returns to the physician complaining of decreased functions in his left arm physical examination reveals a winged left scapula and an inability to raise his left arm above horizontal level which of the following nerve is most likely affected whether the nerve affected is axillary long thoracic lower subscapular suprascapular or thoraco dorsal which is the right answer question number 1 mark the correct answer so yes my dear aspirants your time starts now mark the correct answer i got an answer from dr swapnil what about others so dr swapnil has given his answer so the key point here is decrease function of the left arm winging of scapula winged scapula inability to raise the left arm above horizontal level chitranjan has also given his answer and both of you are absolutely right the right answer is long thoracic nerve why i will tell you actually long thoracic nerve which is also called as bell's nerve it is a nerve supply for which muscle it is giving innervation to serratus anterior muscle 
it is giving innervation to serratus anterior muscle and when serratus anterior muscle is paralyzed it will lead to loss of overhead abduction uh, so overhead abduction function is gone and here also winging of scapula is gone so overhead abduction means the abduction above horizontal level and also it is not able to keep the medial border of scapula towards the midline so it will lead to uh, the loss of protraction of the scapula and this will lead to winging of scapula so my dear aspirants serratus anterior muscle innervated by long thoracic nerve is very important for the stabilization of scapula during the abduction of arm done from 90 to 180 degrees so overhead abduction other than that we also know that the nerve supply of serratus anterior muscle is by long thoracic nerve and we know that long thoracic nerve is having a root value of c5 c6 and c7 okay winging of scapula is a classical clue which is giving us that the nerve injured is long thoracic nerve so that is the right answer now other than that supraspinatus was one of the option it is not the right answer why because supraspinatus is involved in giving it is called it is causing it causes abduction of arm but it is causing abduction from 0 to 15 degree what does that mean that means it is involved in initiation of abduction movement okay it is involved in initiation of abduction movement basically 0 to 30 degree basically more of 0 to 15 degree and initiation of abduction was not lost in this case but overhead abduction was lost so we will not mark this as the right answer other than that rest of the motion to 180 degree is performed by deltoid muscle which is uh, so actually um, 15 to 90 degree is done by deltoid and 90 degrees say above 180 degree is done by serratus anterior muscle along with the fibers of trapezius muscle so that is the reason we will go with serratus anterior as the right answer axillary nerve is also a branch of posterior chordobrachial plexus and it gives innovation to uh, deltoid muscle and when deltoid muscle is involved basically the injury happens at the level of surgical neck of humerus and uh, when it is injured abduction of is not possible that means abduction of 15 to 90 degrees is not possible abduction of 15 to 90 degrees is not possible a purely placed crutch damages the nerve and we know that it will be damaged when um, it will be damaged axillary nerve is damaged it will lead to injury of teres minor muscle and deltoid muscle and we know that teres minor muscle is causing lateral rotation of arm deltoid muscle is also involved for 15 to 90 degree of abduction but not in overhead abduction so it is not the right answer lower subscapular was one of the option and it it is giving innovation to teres major muscle as we know and we know that action of teres major muscle is medial rotation of arm medial rotation of arm was not involved suprascapular nerve is giving innovation to supraspinatus muscle causing 0 to 15 degree of abduction infraspinatus is involved in lateral rotation of arm so lateral rotation of arm or initiation of abduction was not involved in the mcq so these are wrong options let's move on to the next so before that thoraco dorsal was one of the option which is giving innovation to latissimus dorsi muscle and we know that latissimus dorsi action is extension adduction and medial rotation this was not injured so this is not the right answer question number second in subclavian artery block at the outer border of the first rib all of the following arteries help in maintaining the circulation to upper limb except in subclavian artery block at the outer border of the first rib all of the following arteries helps in maintaining the circulation to upper limb except so question number second we have got four options you have to choose the right answer which of the following artery is not helping in maintaining circulation to upper limb thyrocervical trunk suprascapular subscapular or superior thoracic artery which is the right answer waiting for you all to reply please mark the correct answer subscapular i can okay suprascapular okay so yes i got an answer okay chitranjan gherwal okay let me explain it so the right answer is superior thoracic the right answer is superior thoracic let me explain why so this is a case of uh, scapular and this is a question about scapular anastomosis 
this is a case of scapular anastomosis. So, when we are talking about scapular anastomosis on the back of the scapula, we have got anastomotic network. So, yes, Dr. Swapnil, you are absolutely right. Superior thoracic artery. Actually, scapular anastomosis, when there is any kind of obstruction in the uh, subscapular artery, axillary artery, a collateral circulation is maintained, which is forming scapular anastomosis. The collateral circulation is maintained in between the branches of, it is maintained in between the branches of first part of subclavian artery it is formed in between the branches of sub pa first part of subclavian artery and the branches of third part of axillary artery third part of axillary artery so my dear aspirants here thyro cervical trunk is a branch of first part of subclavian artery suprascapular artery is a branch of thyro cervical trunk it is also a branch of thyro cervical trunk so indirectly it is also a branch of first part of subclavian artery Subscapular artery is a branch of third part of axillary artery, but superior thoracic is a branch from first part of axillary artery. As we know, the anastomosis is formed between the branches of first part of subclavian and third part of axillary artery. So, superior thoracic artery is not the right answer. Let me show you this image. So, let me just enlarge it. So, here you can appreciate in this diagram that suprascapular artery is a branch or uh, suprascapular artery which is a branch of thyro cervical trunk it is a branch from first part of subclavian artery is forming an anastomosis with the other artery that is circumflex scapular and we know that circumflex scapular is a branch of subscapular which is a branch of third part of axillary artery that means this anastomotic network is between the first part of subclavian artery and the branch of third part of axillary artery okay so, superior thoracic artery is not involved. This is the anastomosis which is onto the body of scapula. Other than that, at the acromial process, the anastomosis is between the acromial branch of suprascapular artery and also the acromial branch of thoracoacromial artery and basically the acromial branch of posterior circumflex scapular artery. Here, posterior circumflex is the branch from third part of axillary artery and this acromial branch from suprascapular artery is also a branch from first part of subclavian artery. Also a contribution is taken from second part of axillary artery. So here clearly you can see the anastomosis and the branches. You can appreciate that anastomosis is not taking uh, with the branch that is superior thoracic artery which is a branch from first part of sub uh, axillary artery. So superior thoracic artery branch of first part of axillary artery is not taking part in formation of any kind of anastomosis around the scapula. Let us move on to the next question number third. Okay. Got it Divya? Okay dear. A 24 year old mountain climbers presents to the emergency room with right shoulder pain following a fall. He was climbing a cliff at a nearby national park when he lost his grip and fell approximately 5 meters onto the boulders below. He says that he landed on his right arm and heard the bone snap. Physical examination reveals total instability to extend the right wrist. X-ray reveals a fracture of right humeral sept. Which of the following artery is most likely to be injured in this case? The options are anterior circumflex humeral artery, brachial artery, common introsius artery, deep brachial artery and radial collateral artery. So, five options are there. Mark the correct answer. Your time starts now. So, the hint which is provided here is examination is showing inability to extend the wrist. Okay. So, you have and the fracture is in this humeral sap. So, you have to tell me which artery is injured. Dr. Sopnil is telling B. Okay. What if Chitranjan is telling A. So, my dear aspirants, here the injury is in the humeral sap and uh, you can see the structure which is injured is causing inability to extend the wrist. So, that means inability to extend the wrist. Which nerve is damaged? Can anybody tell me? Inability to extend the wrist, that means which nerve is damaged? Which nerve is damaged? No, inability to extend the wrist. Inability to extend the wrist, which nerve is damaged? The nerve damage, what is the name of the nerve which is damaged here? Inability to extend the wrist. 
the nerve damaged is any answer radial nerve okay radial nerve yes chitranjan so radial nerve so can anybody tell me radial nerve is lying in which groove radial nerve is lying in radial groove or spiral groove of the humeral sept so radial nerve is located in radial nerve is located in radial groove or spiral groove of the humerus bone or shaft so actually along with it if along with radial nerve we have got another artery that is the deep artery of arm deep artery of arm which is a branch of brachial artery which is the what is the name of that artery it is called as profunda brachii artery profunda brachii artery so it is not the brachial artery dear it is the deep branch of brachial artery profunda brachii artery so d is the right answer so in close association with in close association with radial nerve uh, the artery which is running is the profunda brachii artery deep branch of deep branch of profunda brachii artery is deep branch of brachial artery so that is the right answer now see here let's move on to this with this explanation okay so here my dear aspirants you can appreciate this is the radial nerve and you can appreciate the radial nerve and the deep artery of arm both these structures are located in this area both these structures are located in this area this area is the radial groove okay so here you can see this is the area of radial groove and here one artery so red color for the artery and the one nerve so yes so the artery is deep artery of arm which is a branch of brachial artery profunda brachii artery and the nerve is radial nerve so in the mid shaft of the humerus in the mid shaft of the humerus fracture radial nerve and deep brachial artery is injured radial nerve is giving innervation to most of the extensor muscles of the elbow forearm extensor and this will lead to loss of extension at the wrist so that is the correct answer now anterior circumflex humeral artery is a branch from axillary artery and it passes anterior to surgical neck of humerus anastomoses with the posterior circumflex humeral artery now the fracture of surgical neck of humerus if it is injured it will lead to involvement of uh, involvement of axillary nerve so at this level we have got axillary nerve being involved so at this level we have got axillary nerve being involved along with it the arterial anastomosis between the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral artery so it is clear that this is not the right answer brachial artery is also not the right answer because exact location is it is coursing anteromedially it is coursing anteromedially in the arm within the bicipital groove and it is giving its terminal branches radial and ulnar artery when it enters into the forearm actually if we talk about brachial artery some of the students got confused with the brachial artery brachial artery is involved in cases of supracondylar fracture not the spiral groove common interosseous artery branch of ulnar nerve gives anterior posterior uh, recurrent arteries and it is located at the level of proximal forearm where it is located it is located at the level of proximal forearm so it is not the right answer injury to radial collateral artery injury to radial collateral artery is less likely as it originates from the at the level of lower end of the spiral groove where deep artery pierces intermuscular septum so actually radial collateral artery is lying on the lower most aspect of the spiral groove but it is not closely associated with radial nerve so this is also not the right answer branches of brachial artery all of the following are branches of brachial artery except so this is profunda brachii artery superior ulnar artery inferior ulnar artery and radial collateral artery so see here i have given you four options and you have to mark the right answer branches of brachial artery is all except which of the following is not the branch of brachial artery which of the following is not the branch of brachial artery branches of brachial artery is all except which of the following is not a branch of brachial artery So yes, your time starts now. Mark the correct answer. Branches of brachial artery is all except four options are there.
okay so according to you which is the right answer so i got an answer from chitranjan he is telling d as the right answer means yes so d is absolutely right answer rusha day yes d is absolutely right answer yes my dear aspens radial collateral artery is a branch of which artery can anybody tell me all of you are absolutely right radial collateral artery is a branch of profunda brachii artery it is not directly the branch of brachial artery but it's a branch of profunda brachii artery so yes clearly we have got d as the answer or four as the answer so see here if you want i can enlarge this image and i would like to show you that here we have this brachial artery and brachial artery is giving important branches it is giving inferior ulnar collateral arteries it is giving superior ulnar collateral artery it is giving profunda brachii artery and it is giving the uh, branches that is ulnar and radial artery as its direct branch as it directs branch so that means profunda brachii artery muscular branches superior inferior ulnar artery muscular branches and all that ulnar and radial artery these becomes a direct branch from brachial artery okay interosseous arteries as exactly if we talk about okay see nicely there so many arteries branches are there rusha day so many branches are there there so you have to see this in uh, this diagram okay there is a schematic diagram also where you can see the branches don't worry there is a schematic diagram also but this is the diagram taken from gray's anatomy okay so you can see here recurrent arteries are there recurrent arteries are the branches of ulnar artery and now i would like to show you a schematic diagram so that you can better understand in that so see that diagram see here so yes rusha devi rusha de as it okay so see here you can clearly see this is brachial artery so its direct branches are profunda brachii artery nutrient artery it is giving muscular artery it is giving superior ulnar artery it is giving inferior ulnar artery ulnar and radial artery so yes rusha de you can see clearly the direct branches of brachial artery here profunda brachii artery nutrient artery superior inferior ulnar collateral artery ulnar and radial artery and muscular artery so these are the branches of brachial artery directly now if you will focus on to if you will focus on to the profunda brachii artery branches what you can appreciate it is passing through lower triangular space it is giving following branches it is giving deltoid branch it is giving nutrient for artery to the humerus it is giving muscular artery and it is giving radial collateral and middle collateral artery so now you can appreciate here in this image that deltoid nutrient artery muscular artery radial collateral artery so now you can appreciate that radial collateral artery is directly branch of profunda brachii artery radial collateral artery is directly branch of profunda brachii artery so that is the reason we will choose profunda brachii artery as a direct source of branch for the radial collateral artery so it is quite clear that radial collateral artery is the right answer why because radial collateral artery is a branch from profunda brachii all other options are directly the branch of brachial artery so profunda brachii artery superior inferior ulnar arteries all are directly the branch of brachial artery but radial collateral middle collateral muscular deltoid branch all these are direct branch of profunda brachii artery let's move on to the next question number 5 clavi pectoral fascia is derived from which of the following ligament coraco acromial coraco clavicular costo clavicular or costo coracoid clavi pectoral fascia is derived from which ligament costo coracoid coraco acromial co coraco clavicular or costo clavicular which is the right answer so means you have to tell which is a part of clavi pectoral fascia so costo clavicular coraco clavicular coraco acromial or costo coracoid which is exactly becomes a part of clavi pectoral fascia only four options mark the correct answer costo coracoid who is this chitranjan is absolutely right yes chitranjan is absolutely right costo coracoid is the right answer yes chitranjan you are absolutely right costo coracoid is right answer actually this costo coracoid is formed from upper fibers upper fibers of clavi pectoral fascia upper fibers of clavi pectoral fascia extending from the coracoid process to the 
first costal part of the rib first costal aspect of the rib so actually this is exactly the form from the fibers of the clavi pectoral fascia other than that these are the ligaments which is connecting the other connecting like for coracoacromial ligament is uh, connecting coracoid and acromial process coracoclavicular ligament is connecting the coracoid and clavicle costoclavicular ligament is connecting the uh, costal cartilage and the clavicle so these are not exactly the part these are the parts where clavi pectoral fascia is merging merging but costocoracoid is the part which is exactly formed from clavi pectoral fascia only so that is the right answer so we will go with uh, four or costocoracoid as the right answer okay so see here investing layer of deep cervical fascia here you can see clavi pectoral fascia is is uh, is uh, is having sub clavius and pectoralis minor muscle which is enclosed by it and it is merging with costoclavicular ligament coracoclavicular ligament so you can clearly see it is merging with the uh, if you will see this diagram you can understand it is merging with costoclavicular coracoclavicular ligament but if we talk about its part costocoracoid is the part of clavi pectoral fascia those who have made a mistake please note down costocoracoid is actually the ligament which is derived from clavi pectoral fascia structures related to deltopectoral group which of the following structure is related to deltopectoral group axillary artery cephalic vein basilic vein or that of radial nerve which of the following structure is related to deltopectoral group which of the following structure is related to deltopectoral group so yes your time starts now absolutely correct chitranjan absolutely correct dear cephalic vein is the right answer yes cephalic vein is passing between so yes absolutely correct cephalic vein is traversing between deltoid and pectoralis major muscle so see here i would like to enlarge this image where you can clearly appreciate this is the vein which i am highlighting with blue color this vein is cephalic vein and you can yes dr swapnil dr chitranjan absolutely correct which is clearly located cephalic vein is clearly located in between the deltoid muscle this is the deltoid muscle and this is the pectoralis major muscle so in between pectoralis major and the deltoid muscle the uh, the vein which is traversing is the cephalic vein the vein which is traversing is the cephalic vein now bicipital aponeurosis lies over which of the following structure bicipital aponeurosis is located and it is covering which of the following structure in the cubital fossa so bicipital aponeurosis is forming a covering for median cubital vein radial nerve brachial artery anterior interosseous artery so bicipital aponeurosis is covering which of the following structure in the cubital fossa your time starts now mark the correct answer question number so yes absolutely correct chitranjan it's the brachial artery so yes the brachial artery is the right answer yes chitranjan that is absolutely correct actually bicipital aponeurosis is lying over median nerve it is covering median nerve and that of brachial artery so two structure is covered by bicipital aponeurosis bicipital aponeurosis is the extension of bicipital tendon biceps tendon going towards the medial aspect forming an aponeurotic structure which is covering median nerve and brachial artery so you can clearly appreciate here this is the bicipital aponeurosis and it is covering two important structures yes so it is covering brachial artery as shown in the diagram and it is covering median nerve these two structures these two structures brachial artery and median nerve is covered by bicipital aponeurosis so this is the right answer question number 8 all of the following are true about all of the following are true about the structure marked in green as shown in the image except which of the following uh, is not true so let me slightly enlarge the image so i am enlarging it now you can clearly appreciate and you can tell me the answer 
So, all of the following is the true statement. So, all of the following are the true statement about Mark's structure means the structure which is shown in green color except all of the following are true statement about the structure marked in green and shown in the image except A, B, C, D which is the right answer. So, yeah, okay, causes elbow flexion, okay. So, can you tell me which muscle is this? That will help you to understand the right answer. So, can you tell me which muscle is this? My question is which muscle is this? Which muscle is this? That will help you to mark the right answer. Which muscle is this? Anyone? Which muscle is this? This is brachioradialis muscle this is brachioradialis muscle and my dear aspirants brachioradialis muscle what is the nerve supply it is directly getting innervation from radial nerve not from deep branch so the correct answer is d the correct answer is d why because brachioradialis is the muscle which is getting innervation from radial nerve so if we talk about the extensor compartment muscle both brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus we have got two brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus. These two muscles are getting innovation from radial nerve. These two muscles are getting innovation from radial nerve. So, absolutely we have got D as the right answer. Other than that, all other statement is absolutely correct about brachioradialis. Yes, Sopnil, you are absolutely right. So, see here, if I talk about brachioradialis, you can see here it originates from humerus bone. It is originating from humerus bone and inserting onto the radius. To be more specific, it originates from lateral supracondylar ridge of lateral supracondylar ridge of humerus bone, upper two third part, upper two third part, and inserts into the inserts just above radial inserts just above radial steloid process. Insert just above the radial steloid process. Got it? Now, origin lateral supracondylar, origin is lateral supracondylar ridge of humerus and ligaments of radius distally radial steloid process, nerve supply is directly radial nerve and it also causes flexion, supination and pronation at radio ulnar joint. So, this is the whole detail about brachioradialis muscle and clearly we can see it is getting innervation from radial nerve so that is the reason that was wrong option it is not getting innervation from posterior introsseous nerve let's move on to the next question number th ninth third extensor compartment of wrist contains the tendon of which of the following so write down the correct answer third extensor compartment contains the tendon of which of the following muscle third extensor compartment third extensor compartment of the wrist contains the tendon of which muscle ECRL, ECRB, extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis which is the right one. So e yes absolutely right there Chitranjan yes this is the right answer this is absolutely right answer yes. So yes absolutely correct Dr. Swapnil yes. So, it is important that you should know the tendons of extensor compartment. You should know the details of extensor tendons. So, those who have marked the mistake, see here. So, we will just make out the layout of extensor compartments. So, this is the cut section of radius bone and this is the cut section of ulna bone. So, I would like to use green color for the extensor retinaculum. Below it, we have got how many? Six compartments. Below it, we have got six compartments. So, this is the compartment 1, this is compartment 2, this is compartment 3, this is compartment 4, this is 5th and this is 6th. So, these are 6 extensor compartments. These are 6 extensor compartment. Okay. Now, it is important to know what all structures lies in the 6 extensor compartment. So, let us talk about the tendons. So, yes, we have got following tendons. So, we have got 2 tendons in the first We have got two tendons in the second. So, just to make you understand here. Yes, Chitranjan English Premier League. Okay. So, 
I did not get you. Okay. So, see here these are the tendons which I have made in the fourth not only this in the fourth not only this we have got also an artery and nerve we have also got an artery and nerve. So, let us write the name let us write the name there ok right here. So, in the first extensor compartment we have got extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus in the second compartment ECRL and ECRB two tendons in the third compartment extensor pollicis longus in the fourth compartment extensor digiti and extensor indices and other than that we have got posterior introsius nerve and we have got anterior introsius artery anterior introsius artery in the fifth compartment extensor digiti minimi so edm in short form edm and in the fifth compartment extensor carpi annularis so got it a quick revision of all the extensor tendons and the structure located in this extensor tendons individual extensor tendons so yes let's move on to the next that is question number 10th okay this is question number 10th so let's move on to the 10th number question Question number 10th, okay. A 85 year old man is admitted to the hospital with a painful arm after lifting a case of wine. Physical examination gives you the evidence of rupture of long tendon of biceps brachii as shown in the diagram. Which of the following is most likely the location of rupture? So, you have to tell me uh, this is the case of. Uh, a rupture of uh, biceps brachii and normally the rupture occurs at which level so that is the question ruptures occur at which level in the case of biceps brachii question number 10th okay so he is waiting for you Mark the correct answer here, mark the correct answer. So, yes, Chitranjan, Swapnil, mark the correct answer. Which is the right answer? So, here the correct answer is, so here the correct answer will be, the location will be intertubercular groove. The best answer is intertubercular groove, okay. So, my dear aspirants, the tendon if we talk about the involvement we know that this here the involvement is also shown that it is the biceps tendon and we know that the biceps tendon is running in the intertubercular groove just on to the uh, proximal humerus and when the biceps tendon is traversing from the intertubercular groove this is the location where it is changing its direction. So, it changes its direction and move and turns medially to get attached to supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. So, it get attached to the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. The change in the direction, the change of the direction within this osseous structure is the is uh, seen in cases where uh, more of the use or overuse of biceps brachii or the it can lead to wearing and tearing of biceps brachii and it is the most common location which is exactly in the intertubercular groove. So, we will go that is the we will go with uh, A as the right answer there because this is the place where the biceps tendon is changing its direction and this is the common site where it is involved. So, see here this diagram you can appreciate here the intertubercular groove has been shown and you can see here this is the tendon of biceps muscle here it is massing uh, and changing its direction. So, this is more commonly injured site for the rupture of biceps tendon. Let us move on to the next question number 11 a 22 year old pregnant woman was admitted urgently to the hospital after her baby had begun to appear at the introitus the baby had presented in the breech position and has been necessary to extra exert considerable traction to complete the delivery 
the newborn is shown in the diagram and in the figure which of the following structure was most likely injured by the trauma of the child birth so the injury is off to the radial nerve injury is in the upper trunk of brachial plexus lower trunk of brachial plexus median nerve radial nerve upper lower trunk of brachial plexus according to you which is the most possible right answer so yes my dear aspirants let me mark the correct answer actually this is a case of actually this is a case of upper trunk palsy and this is called as waiter tip deformity this is a case of waiter tip deformity it is a case of waiter tip deformity yes this is a case of waiter tip deformity which is also called as policeman tip deformity it is also called as policeman tip deformity and in this case the arm is adducted yes absolutely case uh, and medially rotated forearm is the forearm is extended and pronated pronated and this is a case of obs duken paralysis and absolutely the b answer will be correct and many of the aspirants has given the right answer so b is absolutely correct okay this is a injury of upper trunk brachial plexus during breech delivery as described in this condition during the breech delivery the uh, mechanism of injury which is described in this condition a downward traction is applied to the shoulder and upper limb and as the baby is forcefully uh, extracted through the birth canal this will exert uh, pressure on the upper cord of brachial plexus will cause a traction injury and the ventral rami of c5 and c6 the ventral rami of the ventral rami of c5 and c6 will be involved and the injury is permanent okay obs you can paralysis let's move on to the next question number 12 a young athlete presents to your office after sustaining an injury to the right upper extremity physical examination reveals weak right forearm flexion and an absence of biceps reflex given these findings sensation and loss of which of the following area is most likely to be found in the patient okay so involvement is of posterior arm involvement is of posterior forearm either the involvement is of lateral forearm medial forearm or thin arm eminences which is the right one question number 12 clit presents to your office after sustaining injury to the right upper extremity weak right forearm flexion and absent biceps reflex so which of the following sensation will be lost a b c d e which is the right answer my dear aspirants okay so actually which nerve is injured here so loss of flexion and absence biceps reflex so this is the hint loss of a uh, uh, weak right forearm flexion and absence of biceps reflex the hint is this is involving musculocutaneous nerve so there is injury of musculocutaneous nerve and musculocutaneous nerve is again giving innervation to bbc biceps brachii brachialis and coraco brachialis okay so my dear aspirants so this will lead to lateral forearm loss of sensation we know that musculocutaneous nerve when it reaches the forearm it continued by becoming lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm so it becomes lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm so that is the reason c is the right answer see here the patient symptom is suggestive of no no it's the musculocutaneous nerve dear so the patient is suggestive of injury of musculocutaneous nerve and we know that musculocutaneous nerve is giving innervation to bbc biceps brachii brachialis and coraco brachialis after innervating this uh, muscle it proceed to the lateral forearm and become lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm so skin sensation on the lateral aspect of forearm will be affected if there is an injury to musculocutaneous nerve if there is involvement of musculocutaneous nerve lateral cutaneous sensation of forearm will be affected lesions of musculocutaneous nerve at the elbow will cause a uh, penetrating injury in the axilla and it will lead to the loss of motor so see here it gives innervation to three muscles so it will cause the loss of the action of these three muscle biceps brachii coraco brachialis and that of uh, biceps brachii brachialis so it will be involving so what is the as what will be seen it will be led to involve so it will lead to loss of biceps reflex also flexion of and shoulder elbow 
both flexion is weakened but at it is not completely lost because pectoralis major and brachioradialis is still active. Re brachioradialis enables supination along with the supinator muscle so lesion of musculocutaneous nerve will involve loss of action of brachialis bicep brachii and coracobrachialis muscle. Lesion of musculocutaneous nerve that means these uh, muscles which is lost here will lead to loss of biceps tendon and also sensory loss on lateral aspect of forearm. So, because of this we will go with the, so the continuation of musculocutaneous nerve proceed into the forearm and form lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm. So, you can see loss of sensation will be seen in the lateral aspect of forearm as seen in the blue area and this will be lost in this condition. Okay. So, uh, posterior forearm is not the right answer because posterior aspect of forearm get innervation from the source that is radial nerve. Posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm is a branch from radial nerve. So, that is the reason it is not the right answer. Posterior forearm, posterior arm both are the branches of radial nerve. So, this is the reason that uh, here musculocutaneous nerve is involved not the radial nerve. So, this is not the right answer. Also medial forearm is not the right answer because medial aspect of forearm it is a branch from medial cord of brachial plexus innervated by a branch of ulnar nerve and here we have not the involvement of medial cord of brachial plexus but musculocutaneous nerve. So, that is the reason it is not the right answer. Now thinar eminences is getting innervation from which, mus uh, which um, nerve? Thinar eminences is getting innervation from Thinar eminences get innervation from recurrent branch of medial nerve and in this case medial nerve was not injured. So, again this is not the right answer. So, got it everyone? So, that is the reason this is also not the right answer. Now, talking about neat PG subscription. So, neat PG subscription I would like to enlarge. You can see the plus subscription pricing, the iconic and the light subscription. Whichever suits you, you can take the subscription, you can have the comparison of all the subscription plus iconic and light. You can see this uh, comparison and you can decide which subscription you have to take. You can use my code and add 10 and get an extra discount of 10% of any of the subscription which you are going to take. This will be highly beneficial for you my dear aspirants and also the students of first and second year should definitely go for plus or iconic subscription of 3 to 4 years because they will clear their university exam by the comprehensive courses which is there on the platform of an academy. So, comprehensive courses and you will get a better uh, uh, your prof examination university exam will be cleared of all 19 subject year by year and also you will get prepared for your next exam. All these sessions are taken by the top educators of an academy platform and so you can take that subscription you will get a discount of 10 percent by using the code and add 10. Light subscription means the students who want a quick revision they should take this light subscription where an SS is given to um, the MCQ session previous year MCQs quiz and all and uh, a quick revision rapid. So, you can have that course and you can also go for short subscription. So, for all these subscription an extra discount of 10 percent can be achieved by using my code. So, yes my dear aspirants I would also like to tell that I will take the session subsequently in the evening on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and will let you about the whole timetable. We will go with MCQ session only for this week. So, for this week either on the Unacademy special class that will be taken on Wednesday or on the uh, subscribe on, on the uh, YouTube channel and uh, we will have the MCQ session and we will proceed systematically which will help you to target your dream rank and we can uh, uh, ha we can uh, have the sessions uh, on both YouTube sessions and on the special class free platform of Unacademy. So, yes any any doubt my dear aspirants is it okay? So, all the best all the best everyone all the best for your upcoming examinations and for your studies. So, thank you all the best keep studying you can follow me on the Unacademy app and you will get notification you will receive notification regarding all the sessions which is taken by me it will be highly beneficial and you are not going to miss any of the session. So, do like subscribe the channel that is let's crack neat pg and for uh, my dear aspirants many of the students ask me how to get the pdf of the sessions taken on the youtube. So, generally most of the session is repeated and also taken on the special class of Unacademy. So, if you are watching the session on Unacademy a special free platform also once you have downloaded the app you should go for your goal as neat pg then you can use my code and add 10 to unlock the free session. So, on free session whichever session is taken 
you can participate live you can interact uh, with the um, with the educator you can get your doubts cleared and also at the end of session you can download the pdf notes so these are the benefits which is only present on the special free platform okay all the best keep studying we will meet with the upcoming session thank you so much thanks aspirants so i hope this session was useful for you yes chitranjan welcome dear yes thank you everyone okay do like share subscribe let's crack neat pg channel okay thank you